Lake Baikal, Russian, Ozero Bajkal Tr. Ozero Baikal, IPA, Oz R B J Ka, Buryat, Bajgal Nur Bagal Nur, Mongolian, Bajgal Nur Bagal Nur, etymologically meaning, in Mongolian, the nature lake is a rift lake in Russia, located in southern Siberia, between Irkutsk Oblast to the northwest and the Buryat Republic to the southeast. Lake Baikal is the largest freshwater lake by volume in the world, containing 22–23% of the world's fresh surface water. With 23,615.39 cubic kilometers 5,670 cu mi of fresh water, it contains more water than the North American Great Lakes combined. With a maximum depth of 1,642 meters 5,387 feet, Baikal is the world's deepest lake. It is considered among the world's clearest lakes and is considered the world's oldest lake, at 25 to 30 million years. It is the seventh largest lake in the world by surface area. Like Lake Tanganyika, Lake Baikal was formed as an ancient rift valley, having the typical long, crescent shape with a surface area of 31,722 square kilometers 12,248 square miles. Baikal is home to thousands of species of plants and animals, many of which exist nowhere else in the world. The lake was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1996. It is also home to Buryat tribes who reside on the eastern side of Lake Baikal, raising goats, camels, cattle, sheep, and horses, where the mean temperature varies from a winter minimum of minus 19 degrees Celsius minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit to a summer maximum of 14 degrees Celsius 57 degrees Fahrenheit. The region to the east of Lake Baikal is referred to as Transbaikalia, and the loosely defined region around the lake is sometimes known as simply Baikalia. Geography and hydrography Lake Baikal is in a rift valley, created by the Baikal Rift Zone, where the Earth's crust is slowly pulling apart. At 636 km 395 miles long and 79 km 49 miles wide, Lake Baikal has the largest surface area of any freshwater lake in Asia, at 31,722 square kilometers 12,248 square miles, and is the deepest lake in the world at 1,642 meters 5,387 feet. The bottom of the lake is 1,186.5 meters (3,893 feet) below sea level, but below this lies some 7 kilometers (4.3 miles) of sediment, placing the rift floor some 8 to 11 kilometers (5.0 to 6.8 miles) below the surface, the deepest continental rift on Earth. In geological terms, the rift is young and active; it widens about 2 centimeters (0.8 in) per year. The fault zone is also seismically active, hot springs occur in the area and notable earthquakes happen every few years. The lake is divided into three basins, north, central, and south, with depths about 900 meters 3,000 feet, 1,600 meters 5,200 feet, and 1,400 meters 4,600 feet, respectively. Fault-controlled accommodation zones rising to depths about 300 meters 980 feet separate the basins. The north and central basins are separated by Academician Ridge, while the area around the Selenga Delta and the Bugudeka Saddle separates the central and south basins. The lake drains into the Angara tributary of the Yenisei. Notable landforms include Cape Raitai on Baikal's northwest coast. Baikal's age is estimated at 25 to 30 million years, making it the most ancient lake in geological history. It is unique among large, high-latitude lakes, as its sediments have not been scoured by overriding continental ice sheets. Russian, U.S., and Japanese cooperative studies of deep drilling core sediments in the 1990s provide a detailed record of climatic variation over the past 6.7 million years. Longer and deeper sediment cores are expected in the near future. Lake Baikal is the only confined freshwater lake in which direct and indirect evidence of gas hydrates exists. The lake is completely surrounded by mountains. The Baikal Mountains on the north shore, the Barguzin Range on the northeastern shore, and the Taiga are technically protected as a national park. It contains 27 islands. The largest, Olkhan, is 72 kilometers 45 miles long and is the third largest lake-bound island in the world. The lake is fed by as many as 330 inflowing rivers. 
The main ones draining directly into Baikal are the Selenga River, the Barguzin River, the Upper Angara River, the Turka River, the Sarma River, and the Sneznaya River. It is drained through a single outlet, the Angara River. Water characteristics Baikal is one of the clearest lakes in the world. During the winter in open sections the water transparency can be as much as 30 to 40 meters 98 to 131 feet, but during the summer it is typically 5 to 8 meters 16 to 26 feet. Baikal is rich in oxygen, even in deep sections, which separates it from the distinctly stratified bodies of water such as Lake Tanganyika and the Black Sea. In Lake Baikal, the water temperature varies significantly depending on location, depth, and time of the year. During the winter and spring, the surface freezes for four to five months, from early January to May to June latest in the north, the entire lake surface is covered in ice. On average, the ice reaches a thickness of 0.5 to 1.4 meters 1 1.6 to 4.6 feet, but in some places with hummocks, it can be more than 2 meters 6 .6 feet. During this period, the temperature slowly increases with depth in the lake, being coldest near the ice-covered surface at around freezing, and reaching about 3.5 to 3.8 degrees Celsius .3 to .8 degrees Fahrenheit at a depth of 200 to 250 meters 660 to 820 feet. After the surface ice breaks up, the surface water is slowly warmed up by the sun, and in May to June, the upper circa 300 meters (980 feet) becomes homothermic, same temperature throughout at around 4 degrees Celsius (39 degrees Fahrenheit) because of water mixing. The sun continues to heat up the surface layer, and at the peak in August can reach up to about 16 degrees Celsius 61 degrees Fahrenheit in the main sections and 20 to 24 degrees Celsius 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit in shallow bays in the southern half of the lake. During this time, the pattern is inverted compared to the winter and spring, as the water temperature falls with increasing depth. As the autumn begins, the surface temperature falls again and a second homothermic period at around 4 degrees Celsius 39 degrees Fahrenheit of the upper circa 300 meters 980 feet occurs in October to November. In the deepest parts of the lake, from about 300 meters 980 feet, the temperature is very stable at 3.1 to 3.4 degrees Celsius 37.6 to 38.1 degrees Fahrenheit with only minor annual variations. The average surface temperature has risen by almost 1.5 degrees Celsius 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit in the last 50 years, resulting in a shorter period where the lake is covered by ice. At some locations, hydrothermal vents with water that can be about 50 degrees Celsius 122 degrees Fahrenheit have been found. These are mostly in deep water, but locally have also been found in relatively shallow water. They have very little effect on the lake's temperature because of its huge volume. Stormy weather on the lake is common, especially during the summer and fall, and can result in waves as high as 4.5 meters 15 feet. Topic. Fauna and flora Lake Baikal is rich in biodiversity. It hosts more than 1,000 species of plants and 2,500 species of animals based on current knowledge, but the actual figures for both groups are believed to be significantly higher. More than 80% of the animals are endemic. Flora The watershed of Lake Baikal has numerous floral species represented. The marsh thistle is found here at the eastern limit of its geographic range. Submerged macrophytic vascular plants are mostly absent, except in some shallow bays along the shores of Lake Baikal. More than 85 species of submerged macrophytes have been recorded, including genera such as Ceratophyllum, Myriophyllum, Potamogaton, and Sparganium. The invasive species Elodia canadensis was introduced to the lake in the 1950s. Instead of vascular plants, aquatic flora is often dominated by several green algae species, notably Drapernaldioides, Tetraspora, and Ulithrix in water shallower than 20 meters (65 feet). Although Agiographilla, Cladophora, and Drapernaldioides may occur deeper than 30 meters (100 feet), except for Ulithrix, there are endemic Baikal species in all these green algae genera. More than 400 diatom species, both benthic and planktonic, are found in the lake, and about half of these are endemic to Baikal. However, significant taxonomic uncertainties remain for this group. 
Topic: <laughs> Mammals. The Baikal seal or nerpa Pusa Sibirica, is found throughout Lake Baikal. It is one of only three entirely freshwater seal populations in the world, the other two being subspecies of ringed seals. A wide range of land mammals can be found in the habitats around the lake, such as Eurasian brown bear, Eurasian wolf, red fox, sable, stoat, elk, Siberian red deer, reindeer, Siberian roe deer, Siberian musk deer, wild boar, red squirrel, Siberian chipmunk, marmot, lemming, and alpine hare. Until the early Middle Ages, the wisent European bison was present near the lake, which was the easternmost part of its range. Topic. Birds There are 236 species of birds that inhabit Lake Baikal, 29 of which are waterfowl. Topic. Fish Fewer than 65 native fish species occur in the lake basin, but more than half of these are endemic. The families of Bisicotidae deep water sculpins, Comophoridae Golemyonchus or Baikal oilfish, and Catacomophoridae Baikal sculpins are entirely restricted to the lake basin. All these are part of the Catoidea and are typically less than 20 cm long. Of particular note are the two species of Golemyoncha Comphorus baikalensis and C. Dabowskii. These long-finned, translucent fish typically live in open water at depths of 100 to 500 meters (330 to 1,640 feet), but occur both shallower and much deeper. Together with certain abyssicotid sculpins, they are the deepest living freshwater fish in the world, occurring to near the bottom of Lake Baikal. The Golemyonchus are the primary prey of the Baikal seal and represent the largest fish biomass in the lake. Beyond members of Catoidea, there are few endemic fish species in the lake basin. The most important local species for fisheries is the Omul Corrigonus migratorius, an endemic whitefish. It is caught, smoked, and then sold widely in markets around the lake. Also, a second endemic whitefish inhabits the lake, C. baikalensis. The Baikal black grayling Thymalis baikalensis, Baikal white grayling T. brevipinus, and Baikal sturgeon are other important species with commercial value. They are also endemic to the Lake Baikal basin. Invertebrates The lake hosts a rich endemic fauna of invertebrates. The Copod episcura baikalensis is endemic to Lake Baikal and the dominating zooplankton species there, making up 80 to 90% of total biomass. It is estimated that the episcurans filter as much as a thousand cubic kilometers of water a year, or the lake's entire volume every 23 years. Among the most diverse invertebrate groups are the amphipod and ostracod crustaceans, freshwater snails, annelid worms, and turbellarian worms. Topic. Amphipod and ostracod crustaceans More than 350 species and subspecies of amphipods are endemic to the lake. They are exceptionally diverse in ecology and appearance, ranging from the pelagic macrohectopus to the relatively large deep water Abyssogamorus and Garjajuia, the tiny herbivorous Microropus, and the parasitic Pachyscosis parasitic on other amphipods. The gigantism of some Baikal amphipods, which has been compared to that seen in Antarctic amphipods, has been linked to the high level of dissolved oxygen in the lake. Among the giants are several species of spiny Acanthogamorus and Brachyuropus found at both shallow and deep depths. These conspicuous and common amphipods are essentially carnivores will also take detritus, and can reach a body length up to 7 cm in, similar to another ancient lake, Tanganyika, Baikal is a center for ostracod diversity. About 90% of the Lake Baikal ostracods are endemic, meaning that there are c. 200 endemic species. This makes it the second most diverse group of crustacean in the lake, after the amphipods. The vast majority of the Baikal ostracods belong in the families Candinidae, more than 100 described species, and Citheridiidae, about 50 described species, but genetic studies indicate that the true diversity in at least the latter family has been heavily underestimated. The morphology of the Baikal ostracods is highly diverse. Topic: <laughs> Snails and bivalves. 
As of 2006, almost 150 freshwater snails are known from Lake Baikal, including 117 endemic species from the subfamilies Baikaliina, part of the Amnicolidae, and Benedictina, part of the Lithoglyphidae, and the families Planorbidae and Valvatidae. All endemics have been recorded between 20 and 30 meters (66 and 98 feet), but the majority mainly live at shallower depths. About 30 freshwater snail species can be seen deeper than 100 meters (330 feet), which represents the approximate limit of the sunlight zone, but only 10 are truly deepwater species. In general, Baikal snails are thin-shelled and small. Two of the most common species are Benedictia baikalensis and Megalovolvata baikalensis. Bivalve diversity is lower with more than 30 species, about half of these, all in the families Euglesidae, Pisidiidae, and Sphariidae, are endemic the only other family in the lake is the Unionidae with a single non-endemic species. The endemic bivalves are mainly found in shallows, with few species from deep water. <laughs> Aquatic worms With almost 200 described species, including more than 160 endemics, the center of diversity for aquatic freshwater oligocatas is Lake Baikal. A smaller number of other freshwater annelids is known, 30 species of leeches and 4 polychaetes. Several hundred species of nematodes are known from the lake, but a large percentage of these are undescribed. More than 140 endemic flatworm species are in Lake Baikal, where they occur on a wide range of bottom types. Most of the flatworms are predatory, and some are relatively brightly marked. They are often very abundant in shallow waters, where they are typically less than 2 cm long, but in deeper parts of the lake, the largest, Bicoloplana valida, can reach up to 30 cm when outstretched. <laughs> Sponges at least 18 species of sponges occur in the lake, including 14 species from the endemic family Lubomirskiidae the remaining are from the non-endemic family Spongilidae. In the near-shore regions of Baikal, the largest benthic biomass is sponges. Lubomirskia baikalensis, Baikalospongia bacillifera, and B. intermedia are unusually large for freshwater sponges and can reach 1 meter feet or more. These three are also the most common sponges in the lake. While the Bicolospongia species typically have encrusting or carpet-like structures, L. bicolensis often has branching structures and in areas where common may form underwater forests. Most sponges in the lake are typically green when alive because of symbiotic chlorophytes Zuchlorella, but can also be brownish or yellowish. History The Baikal area, sometimes known as Baikalia, has a long history of human habitation. An early known tribe in the area was the Kurikans. Located in the former Northern Territory of the Xiongnu Confederation, Lake Baikal is one site of the Han Xiongnu War, where the armies of the Han Dynasty pursued and defeated the Xiongnu forces from the 2nd century BC to the 1st century AD. They recorded that the lake was a huge sea. Hanhai and designated it the North Sea Beihai of the semi-mythical Four Seas. The Kurikans, a Siberian tribe who inhabited the area in the 6th century, gave it a name that translates to much water. Later on, it was called natural lake Begolner by the Bryats and rich lake Begol by the Yakuts. Little was known to Europeans about the lake until Russia expanded into the area in the 17th century. The first Russian explorer to reach Lake Baikal was Kerbet Ivanov in 1643. Russian expansion into the Buryat area around Lake Baikal in 1628 58 was part of the Russian conquest of Siberia. It was done first by following the Angara River upstream from Yenisysk founded 1619 and later by moving south from the Lena River. Russians first heard of the Buryats in 1609 at Tomsk. According to folktales related a century after the fact, in 1623, Demid Pyanda, who may have been the first Russian to reach the Lena, crossed from the upper Lena to the Angara and arrived at Yenisysk, Vikhor Savin and Maxim Perfilayev explored Tungus country on the lower Angara. To the west, Krasnoyarsk on the upper Yenisei was founded in 1627. A number of ill-documented expeditions explored eastward from Krasnoyarsk. 
In 1628, Pyotr Bekatov first encountered a group of Buryats and collected Yasik tribute from them at the future site of Bratsik. In 1629, Yakov Kripanov set off from Tomsk to find a rumored silver mine. His men soon began plundering both Russians and natives. They were joined by another band of rioters from Krasnoyarsk, but left the Buryat country when they ran short of food. This made it difficult for other Russians to enter the area. In 1631, Maxim Perfilayev built an ostrich at Bratsik. The pacification was moderately successful, but in 1634, Bratsik was destroyed and its garrison killed. In 1635, Bratsik was restored by a punitive expedition under Radukovsky. In 1638, it was besieged unsuccessfully. In 1638, Perfilayev crossed from the Angara over the Elam portage to the Lena River and went downstream as far as Olyakminsk. Returning, he sailed up the Vitam River into the area east of Lake Baikal 1640, where he heard reports of the Amur country. In 1641, Verkhalensk was founded on the upper Lena. In 1643, Kerbet Ivanov went further up the Lena and became the first Russian to see Lake Baikal and Olkhan Island. Half his party under Skorokhodov remained on the lake, reached the upper Angara at its northern tip, and wintered on the Barguzin River on the northeast side. In 1644, Ivan Pokabov went up the Angara to Baikal, becoming perhaps the first Russian to use this route, which is difficult because of the rapids. He crossed the lake and explored the lower Selenge River. About 1647, he repeated the trip, obtained guides, and visited a Setsan Khan near Ulan Bator. In 1648, Ivan Galkin built an ostrich on the Barguzin River which became a center for eastward expansion. In 1652, Vasily Kolesnikov reported from Barguzin that one could reach the Amur country by following the Selenga, Uda, and Kielik rivers to the future sites of Chita and Nurchinsk. In 1653, Pyotr Bekatov took Kolesnikov's route to Lake Ergen west of Chita, and that winter his man Urasov founded Nurchinsk. Next spring, he tried to occupy Nurchinsk, but was forced by his men to join Stefanov on the Amur. Nurchinsk was destroyed by the local Tungus, but restored in 1658. The Trans Siberian Railway was built between 1896 and 1902. Construction of the scenic railway around the southwestern end of Lake Baikal required 200 bridges and 33 tunnels. Until its completion, a train ferry transported railcars across the lake from Port Baikal to Mysovaya for a number of years. The lake became the site of the minor engagement between the Czechoslovak Legion and the Red Army in 1918. At times during winter freezes, the lake could be crossed on foot, though at risk of frostbite and deadly hypothermia from the cold wind moving unobstructed across flat expanses of ice. In the winter of 1920, the Great Siberian Ice March occurred, when the retreating White Russian Army crossed frozen Lake Baikal. The wind on the exposed lake was so cold, many people died, freezing in place until spring thaw. Beginning in 1956, the impounding of the Irkutsk Dam on the Angara River raised the level of the lake by 1.4 meters 4 .6 feet. As the railway was built, a large hydrogeographical expedition headed by F.K. Drizhenko produced the first detailed contour map of the lake bed. Topic. Research Several organizations are carrying out natural research projects on Lake Baikal. Most of them are governmental or associated with governmental organizations. The Baikalian Research Center is an independent research organization carrying out environmental educational and research projects at Lake Baikal. In July 2008, Russia sent two small submersibles, Mir 1 and Mir 2, to descend 1,592 meters 5 feet to the bottom of Lake Baikal to conduct geological and biological tests on its unique ecosystem. Although originally reported as being successful, they did not set a world record for the deepest freshwater dive, reaching a depth of only 1,580 meters 5,180 feet. That record is currently held by Anatoly Sigalovich, at 1,637 meters 5,371 feet also in Lake Baikal aboard a Pisces submersible in 1990. Russian scientist and federal politician Artur Chalingarov, the leader of the mission, took part in the Mir dives as did Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Since 1993, neutrino research has been conducted at the Baikal Deep Underwater Neutrino Telescope. 
The Baikal Neutrino Telescope NT200 is being deployed in Lake Baikal, 3.6 km .2 miles from shore at a depth of 1.1 km .68 miles. It consists of 192 optical modules. Economy The lake, nicknamed the Pearl of Siberia, drew investors from the tourist industry as energy revenues sparked an economic boom. Viktor Grigorov's Grand Baikal in Irkutsk is one of the investors, who planned to build three hotels, creating 570 jobs. In 2007, the Russian government declared the Baikal region a special economic zone. A popular resort in Listvyanka is home to the seven-story Hotel Mayak. At the northern part of the lake, Baikalplan a German NGO built together with Russians in 2009 the Frolika Adventure Coastline Track, a 100 km miles long long-distance trail as example for a sustainable development of the region. Baikal was also declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1996. Rosatom plans to build a laboratory near Baikal, in conjunction with an international uranium plant and to invest $2.5 billion in the region and create 2,000 jobs in the city of Angersk. Lake Baikal is a popular destination among tourists from all over the world. According to the Russian Federal State Statistics Service, in 2013, 79,179 foreign tourists visited Irkutsk and Lake Baikal, in 2014, 146,937 visitors. The most popular places to stay by the lake are Listvyanka Village, Olkhan Island, Katelnikovsky Cape, Baikalsky Priboy, Resort Kakasi and Turka Village. The popularity of Lake Baikal is growing from year to year, but there is no developed infrastructure in the area. For the quality of service and comfort from the visitor's point of view, Lake Baikal still has a long way to go. The ice road to Olkhan Island is the only legal ice road on Lake Baikal. The route is prepared by specialists every year and it opens when the ice conditions allow it. In 2015, the ice road to Olkhan was open from February 17 to March 23. The thickness of the ice on the road is about 60 cm 24 in, maximum capacity allowed 10 t 9.8 long tons, 11 short tons, it is open to the public from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. The road through the lake is 12 km miles long and it goes from the village Kirkut on the mainland, to Irkutskaya Guba on Olkhan Island. Topic. Environmental concerns Topic. Baikalsh pulp and paper mill The Baikalsh pulp and paper mill was constructed in 1966, directly on the shoreline of Lake Baikal. The plant bleached paper using chlorine and discharged waste directly into Lake Baikal. The decision to construct the plant on the Lake Baikal resulted in strong protests from Soviet scientists. According to them, the ultra pure water of the lake was a significant resource and should have been used for innovative chemical production, for instance, the production of high quality viscose for the aeronautics and space industries. The Soviet scientists felt that it was irrational to change Lake Baikal's water quality by beginning paper production on the shore. It was their position that it was also necessary to preserve endemic species of local biota, and to maintain the area around Lake Baikal as a recreation zone. However, the objections of the Soviet scientists faced opposition from the industrial lobby and only after decades of protest, the plant was closed in November 2008 due to unprofitability. In March 2009, the plant owner announced the paper mill would never reopen. However, on January 4, 2010, production was resumed. Later that year on January 13, 2010, Russian Federation President Vladimir Putin introduced changes in the legislation legalizing the operation of the plant. This action brought about a wave of protests from ecologists and local residents. These changes were based on the determination President Putin made through a visual verification of Lake Baikal's condition from a miniature submarine. I could see with my own eyes, and scientists can confirm, Baikal is in good condition and there is practically no pollution. Despite this, in September 2013, the mill underwent a final bankruptcy, with the last 800 workers slated to lose their jobs by December 28, 2013. On the day the plant was to close, December 28, 2013, the Russian government announced plans to build the Russian Nature Reserves Expo Center in place of the closed paper mill. 
Topic: <laughs> Planned East Siberia Pacific Ocean Oil Pipeline. Russian oil pipeline state company Transneft was planning to build a trunk pipeline that would have come within 800 meters feet of the lake shore in a zone of substantial seismic activity. Environmental activists in Russia, Greenpeace, Baikal Pipeline Opposition and local citizens were strongly opposed to these plans, due to the possibility of an accidental oil spill that might cause significant damage to the environment. According to the Transneft's president, numerous meetings with citizens near the lake were held in towns along the route, especially in Irkutsk. Transneft agreed to alter its plans when Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered the company to consider an alternative route 40 kilometers 25 miles to the north to avoid such ecological risks. Transneft has since decided to move the pipeline away from Lake Baikal, so that it will not pass through any federal or republic natural reserves. Work began on the pipeline two days after President Putin agreed to changing the route away from Lake Baikal. Topic. Proposed uranium enrichment center In 2006, the Russian government announced plans to build the world's first international uranium enrichment center at an existing nuclear facility in Angersk, a city on the river Angara some 95 kilometers 59 miles downstream from the lake's shores. Critics and environmentalists argued it would be a disaster for the region and are urging the government to reconsider. After enrichment, only 10% of the uranium derived radioactive material would be exported to international customers, leaving 90% near the Lake Baikal region for storage. Uranium tailings contain radioactive and toxic materials, which, if improperly stored, are potentially dangerous to humans and can contaminate rivers and lakes. Nonetheless, the enrichment center was built in the end. Topic. Other pollution sources According to the Moscow Times and Vice, an increasing number of an invasive species of algae thrives in the lake from hundreds of tons of liquid waste, including fuel and excrement, regularly disposed into the lake by tourist sites, and up to 25,000 tons of liquid waste are disposed of every year by local ships. Topic. Historical traditions The first European to reach the lake is said to have been Kerbet Ivanov in 1643. In the past, the Baikal was referred to by many Russians as the Baikal Sea, Russian, more Bajkal, more Baikal, rather than merely Lake Baikal, Russian, Ozero Bajkal, Ozero Baikal. This usage is attested already in the life of Protopope Avicum (1621–1682) and on the late 17th century maps by Semyon Remezov. It is also attested in the famous song, now passed into the tradition, that opens with the words Slav no more, Svasenij Bajkal Glorious Sea, the Sacred Bajkal. To this day, the strait between the western shore of the lake and the Olkhan Island is called Maloy Mor, Malo Mor i.e., the Little Sea. Lake Baikal is nicknamed, Older Sister of Sister Lakes, Lake Kavsgal and Lake Baikal. According to 19th century traveller T. W. Atkinson, locals in the Lake Baikal region had the tradition that Christ visited the area. The people have a tradition in connection with this region which they implicitly believe. They say, that Christ visited this part of Asia and ascended this summit, whence he looked down on all the region around. After blessing the country to the northward, he turned towards the south, and looking across the Baikal, he waved his hand, exclaiming, Beyond this there is nothing. Thus they account for the sterility of Doria, where it is said, no corn will grow. Lake Baikal has been celebrated in several Russian folk songs. Two of these songs are well known in Russia and its neighboring countries, such as Japan. Glorious Sea, Sacred Baikal. In Russian, Slavno Mop, Svasenij Bajkal is about a Katorga fugitive. The lyrics is documented and edited in the 19th century by Dmitry P. Davidov 1811-1888. C. Barguzin River, for sample lyrics. The Wanderer, in Russian, Bradega is about a convict who had escaped from jail and was attempting to return home from Transbaikal. The lyrics were collected and edited in the 20th century by Ivan Kondratyev. The latter song was a secondary theme song for the Soviet Union's second color film, Ballad of Siberia, 1947, in Russian. Skazana o Zemlizabrskit. 
See also Russian Far East Sarma wind Topic References Topic Literature Detlev Henschel, Kayak Adventure in Siberia, the first solo circumnavigation of Lake Baikal. Amazon ISBN 978-3-7375-6102-0 Colin Thubrin in Siberia, https colon slash slash www.amazon.co.uk slash dp slash 00609537 x slash ref equals cm underscore sw underscore r underscore cp underscore appy underscore lj5 pab 5 g9 rf4 n Leonid Baradin, Year of Miracle and Grief, Quartet Books, 1988 External links Lake Baikal at Encyclopædia Britannica Lake Baikal Information Baikal Club International magazine about Lake Baikal, maps, photos, videos and stories.